Hello friends, my name is Meg Hunter-Kilmer. I am a writer, a speaker, and a missionary, and I'm so excited to be talking with you guys today about the importance of scripture and why diving into the Word of God is such a beautiful way to encounter Him. I'm Katie Cavadini, and I work at Notre Dame. I teach freshman theology, and I direct our Master of Arts program, and I really love scripture and all the commentary on it and the whole world that it opens up for us, so I'm happy to talk with Meg today about reading the Bible. Reading the Bible can be really daunting at first. It can be really hard to figure out where to start, where to begin, and you can very easily kind of throw your hands up and say, well, I'll just hear about it mass and leave it at that. But I'm gonna tell you a little story that might help us think about why reading the Bible is a good thing to do, something that might even come to feel necessary. And this is a story about my great uncle who passed away a couple years ago, but there's a very beautiful story about his life and that is that when he was young, he had a childhood sweetheart. Her name was Betty. And this is back in the 1920s, 1930s. And they used to do things like go sledding in the winter and dance on the green. We're from the East Coast, so we have greens in our towns. So they go dance on the green. And eventually he joined the Marines and he went off to fight in World War II, very sure that when he returned, he would marry Betty. So he had a difficult time in the war. In fact, he was in the Pacific, he fought at Saipan. And so when he came home, very much looking forward to asking Betty to marry him. When he gets home, Betty has married somebody else. No! Yes. Katie! Okay. No, no, no. Okay. okay, all right, all right. The story gets better. Don't worry. Okay, so our Uncle David, great Uncle David, he took care of our family my whole life, always doing good things for us. He never married because he'd wanted to marry Betty. So guess what happens? When he's 92 and when Betty is 92, they get married. No. Yes. Oh. This is an amazing story. Can you imagine marrying your childhood sweetheart after like 80 years? Wow. Yeah. So we went to the wedding and at the little reception afterwards, um, of course, Betty got up to say something and it was very beautiful. But one of the things she said was, David, if you had only told me, right? If you had only told me. So it comes out that David never said to her, I want to marry you when I come back, right? I love you in that way. Oh. And so she didn't know, and when he was gone, she fell in love and married somebody else. So the point of this, how does this little story about my great uncle, which is an amazing story, help us understand scripture or why we might need to read scripture? It's this little question that Betty asked. If he had told her, she would have known, okay? And so what scripture is, what the Bible is, is God telling us how much he loves us. Right, and so if we can spend our time reading that and coming to know him in that way, we will know. And to explore the reality of that love that God has for us is such an adventure, right? It's a lifelong adventure. And in, on top of that, right, he actually does come to tell us that himself, which in the story of David and Betty, he did that when he realized like, well, Betty's available. He got in his little white sob and he drove from Connecticut all the way out to Ohio in the flesh and said to her, right, I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And so they did, right? So revelation is like this, right? God tells us that he loves us. This is something that we need to know, that we need to hear, and that has such a depth for us to explore and to know and to come to know ourselves and the world in which we live. And so that's what scripture is for, right? It's for exploring that reality. And I think that you know, it can become so trite to hear God loves you. It sort of feels like a bumper sticker, like it should have a, a smiley face on it. And when you encounter the love of God in scripture, there's a depth, there's an intimacy, there's a beauty there that cannot be approximated in in our uninspired words, right? For me, yeah. I have, I'm about to finish my 21st time through the Bible, cover to cover. Uh, and it's amazing because you know, I started when I was 13 years old and I didn't know anything. I didn't, I didn't understand a word that was in there. I read the Bible three times before I realized Israel and Judah were two separate kingdoms. Like I was, I was so lost. And yet God was speaking even in that, right? There would be lines that would stick out to me. There would be moments when I thought, wow, this, this really seems like like it means something. And even today on my 21st read through the Bible, I'm still reading with a pencil in my hand mm -hmm. because the Lord just keeps speaking to my heart. It's not, it's not just a book, 
right? Hebrew says the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. And there is that, that feeling of being pierced when you encounter the Lord in scripture, right? It's not just reading words about Jesus. It's an actual encounter with the Holy Trinity, with the spirit who inspired it, with Jesus, who we see spoken of in the gospels and and really written of in every book of the Bible, right? This encounter for me has been so transformative. And I think it's okay to be intimidated, but you have to say like, God wrote me a love letter and maybe I'm not a great reader, Mm -hmm. but I'm not just going to leave it on the shelf because I think it might be a little bit too complicated for me, right? I'm going to encounter him in this love letter. Right. Being intimidated is, is natural. In fact, in some ways, it lets us approach this, the texts of Scripture with some kind of respect that is due to it, right? Because it is God speaking to you. And if you think about like the Bible as a form of revelation, right? A form of God actually communicating himself to you. Then you're struck by, okay, this book is different than any other thing we could read. It really is both a book and this place of encounter. And the way that God has made himself accessible, knowable, lovable through our language, right? So he has allowed us to present himself in human words and in human language. And so made this this a place of encounter, right? Like we can actually read this and speak with God. We can hear God speaking to us, right? So all the beautiful things you just said about your own experience of reading are possible for anybody. Even if you're intimidated at first, even if it seems daunting, right? Pick it up and read it and, and, and listen to it and just keep reading. Yes. <laughs> just keep reading because the depths and the beauty of which you speak are there and they're, for, they're there for everyone. Gregory the Great has a beautiful line, Pope St. Gregory the Great. He says, scripture is a river deep and wide, mm-hmm. deep enough there for the elephant to swim and shallow enough here for the lamb to wait. And I just... I find that so encouraging, right? First of all, the invitation that you're never going to exhaust this book. There is always going to be more that the Lord has to say, but also the promise that you could be the world's worst reader and the world's least educated person. You might not even be a Christian at all, and God is going to give you something beautiful in Scripture. And it's okay if as you're reading, you're like, well, I don't know what he's saying. I don't, I don't know what he's saying here. Cause eventually you're going to hit a line where the Holy spirit is going to speak to your heart. Uh, and it, it might not be in Chronicles, right? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but eventually it will be right. There is no book that I now read where I, where I would say there's nothing in here that has ever spoken to me. Right. But there are any number of times that I've read an entire book and thought, well, I don't really know what that was about. And that's okay, right? We just, we keep diving in because we know that making that space for God to speak, he's going to show up. Whether we recognize it or not, whether we're sensible of it or not, he's going to show up. So what are the kinds of things that one might need to know in order to make the beginning of reading scripture less daunting, right? Things that maybe we're going to talk more about um, as we move through the various videos on, on reading scripture. I think it really helps to take a step back and to recognize that the scripture is a book with many different books inside, many different genres. There's different ways of reading them. It helps to know that the church has given us guidance on how to read these different books. It helps to know that there are many different ways even of reading the same text, right? The different different senses of scripture, different levels of scripture, but also that you can, you can pray really slowly through scripture. You can imagine yourself in a scene. You can memorize a verse, right? There's so many different forms of encounter with the word of God. And so it is, it's sort of an, an invitation. I don't know. It, it almost feels to me like a, like a county fair or something. There's so many things to do and so many ways to encounter. And, and there are going to be There are going to be games that you go by and you're like, I do not want to throw a hoop around that milk bottle, right? And that's that's okay because this doesn't have to be your thing, right? Mm -hmm. You it's an invitation into so such an incredible diversity of ways to encounter the Lord in scripture. um, That if something doesn't work for you, try something else, right? Do a little bit of research, ask some questions, and and just keep going. All right. So the first step is what we've been speaking about, right? This idea that The Bible itself is both a book, which we have to learn how to approach, 
but also this beautiful place of encounter because God himself speaks to us in these words, right? God communicates himself through them. So what we would like to be able to do now is to help people know what the Bible is as a book, to have an approach to being able to read it well, and then some sort of practical advice for beginning to read and keeping going. <laughs> so tune in to our next videos and you'll get a little bit more.